Hi guys and welcome to the channel, my name is Lutilisius, how are you all doing guys, hope everybody's happy, healthy and doing well and today guys, today we are going to do the guide for the Shockwave Totem build, it has been requested quite a few times and like always guys this video will be cut up in these nice neat little segments that you can see in the bottom of the timeline, you can just skip to this chapter of whatever part of the video you want to see. If you're looking for a build that relies on a lot of layers of defenses to keep you alive, this might very well not be the build for you. This build is meant to be farmed at a distance. You've got multiple screens of range keeping you safe. If you do this correct, you're never even gonna see the monsters. That's the kind of build this is. So we're gonna be looking at magic find, boss killing, blight ravage farming, mapping, bare bones, high budget, pretty much anything and everything. First I'm gonna roll some clips of some showcases of what the build is capable of. Right after that we're gonna dive into all these versions of the build. We're gonna see the overlap between the builds because, you know, all of the builds use some of the same items. We're also gonna look at what scales this build well. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how the build is set up and how to properly set it up from beginning till the very end of the extremist of budgets. Guys, enjoy, let's go! Next map. We're gonna do a Barrows, and it's a nice one. Look at that. Minus Max Ras. We don't use Righteous Fire anymore, so we don't even care about Max Ras. Sure, if you get hit, you get mashed, but that's kinda the idea. Don't get hit, right? That's the, the whole idea of doing this. You're not supposed to be near the enemy with what we have. So here we go. Another big boy. 340. 350. 355. It's gonna be 370 something close to it. Oh, you wanna be an elephant. You know? The totem guy. Alright, let me put this... Uh, in a somewhat smart location. So looking at the bottom here, what do you see guys? There's only one boss immune to cold. Which means it's almost a free map. Now the boss that's immune to cold is actually right here. So what that means is that that's the one that spawns first. Right, that's the first tower, so that's going to be the first boss spawn. Now what that means is, if we kill this guy, we're on vacation for the remainder of the map. So I'm going to fortify my damage position from here, kill that boss before anything else, and just enjoy the rest of the map by placing literally just a few of these little things here. That's all we need to do. Yep, that's a free map. That's what we call a free map. But check, this This gives you the, the chance to check the AOE on my totems. Look at this. It's like a... Like one third of the screen's worth of AoE. There's the boss. I'm gonna focus just on that guy. And... There's your free map. That's it. That's the danger gone. And now we can just, you know, put one chill and freeze tower here. One chill and freeze tower here. Double, 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 double. One here. Just everything that remotely looks like a lane, or that could become a lane, we, we turn into a bottleneck and freeze everything. Same thing for this one. And the boss is frozen. And then you get all the time in the world. Look at that damage. Brrr, done. That is not bad. And this is the safety setup, the AOE setup. This is purpose. <laughs> the safety setup. Boom, dies. So yeah, no, this this but this really is the safety setup. Uh, it's just a map with minus 11 max RAS, which isn't really all that great for burning ground. And I hear you think, why aren't you using, you know, the, the, the thing that gives you the immunity to burning ground? It's because, you know, I'm stupid. Yeah, it, oh, by the way, there is a reason why we are doing level 3, Jessica. You might, you might think, why is he doing that? He's, oh my fucking god, really? Wow, okay, I need to stay away from these fuckers. Chee. So the reason I'm doing a level 3 freezing tower is not because I need a level 3 to freeze them. No, we don't, because we have, you know, ring anoint. The reason I'm doing that is because the range of a level 3 freeze is way bigger than a level 1. That means you've got more overlap and that means you have more effective freeze than just putting a level 1 tower in there. That's why we do it. 
And remember that recoup ring. There it goes. I might have listed that too cheap. Well, enough excuses. What I need to do now is I need to, you know, get my ass to a point where I'm paying attention because losing two portals is one thing. I definitely can't lose a third. Unacceptable. So I need to keep my distance now and use the crazy range my totems have, which is two screens. Literally two screens away. If I do that, I shouldn't get hit. Like at all. And there we go. That's another boss down. As you can see, we have no damage towers. We are just simply immobilizing everything. Now that's interesting to see. So it appears that we have... There we go, pause down. And now you see how, it, how just crazy important it is to have this range. Boss down. See that range? See how far it's clearing? Let him hide. This is why you play this build. You can turn it into whatever the hell you want. It can be a boss killer. It can even clear Blight Ravage maps. As you can see, because all the damage you see now is actual damage. This is not me using damage towers at all. There is no damage towers used. Yet you see shit disappear from three screens away before it's even capable of attacking us. Now, what more do you want, right? That's a boss down, and that's all from the totems. Yeah, it's the same guy that wants that, guys. I, I think I've, I might have underpriced that thing. I really do think so. My secondary ring anoint is for the... Uh, what's that thing called? Uh, uh, the uh, meteor tower, right? The burning ground thingy. It's just, I kind of want to test my build in between as well. Just for, um, for a visualization of power. Like if I would have built a green tower here and meteor towers here, this would have been you know, pretty much over already. But sometimes you just want to test your build. On a difficult map at that, because this is a hard one. If we get hit, we are smashed. We've got no resistances thanks to the map modifiers. And still, the reason we do it is... Simply because, well, we can, first and foremost. And second... Is because it gives us more loot, right? It's a difficult map, which means higher loot count. There you go, it's another one clear. This should be it. What am I missing? Little group here. Another group here. Loot time. Google version of the Searing Exarch. Third store knowledge. Boots at 85. Let's see what happens with this. We just did a one Eater of Worlds and we got an Ashes. So uh, let's see what happens with this one. See if we can get lucky again. There we go. Right, a little bit of a flask. Put this one on. There's the Uber. Ah. Insatiable appetite, there we go. Uber, you know.
There you go. Oh, dude, I got ashes. That's a bit more of a juicy one. Now, the interesting part about this all is that while we are saving up for the hat hunter, we gotta keep in mind that we also want to reset. Am I seeing that correctly? No freeze icons anywhere. Uh, we call that a free map. There we go. It's branching exile. So there's no freeze icons. And no, while we uh, while we are saving up for that hunt, we also need to keep a few dozen divines worth of golden oils and silver oils and you know all that kind of stuff for the next run because it's not like we get our headhunter and then the leak is over no we get our headhunter so we can go triple teal and what does that mean that means these maps will then spawn monsters twice as fast but that also gives me headhunter stacks twice as fast it scales my power twice as fast and it ups my loot per hour by about 60 percent so even though the loot per investment goes down a little bit, right? Because you have less lucky chests. So theoretically your loot per investment goes down. Because you do the maps pretty much twice as fast, your loot per hour skyrockets. Okay, that should be good. Oh look, we got a boss. Oh, he's running. Why are you running? Here we go. Just one of these over here. Should be enough. And this is just all going to be damage. Oh, oh, we got Spore Plume. Okay, so Spore Plume, I'm not sure if anybody knows who, who Spore Plume is, but the Spore Plume guy is the guy that keeps, you know, duplicating himself. Right? Making replicas of himself. And the interesting thing is, each time you kill a Spore Plume replica, like a copy of him, it counts as a full blown boss. So, what's happening here is you gain an insane amount of points to build towers. Which, obviously, we will abuse by making a hell of a lot of fair. Uh, meteor Tower. Destroying content pretty much everywhere. We have a smooth start here, I like that. Always good to have a smooth start. Now we settle in, because it's quite some hours. I'm expecting to be done around, I think, 12 o'clock, maybe a little later my time. Right now it's 5 o'clock. 15 past 5, so I'll be here for the next uh, at least 7 hours. <laughs> Another sport plume. Oh boy. Too bad we can't really build anything else anymore here. We could pretty much build everything there is to build. Do not get the leap to I won't. Got a couple of these guys mission impossibling themselves past the 1500 towers that we have. 
but it should be fine. Now that looks interesting. Got a few currency chests here, just a few. I accidentally opened uh, a few there, but there's still a few left. We got a 17 currency chest little corner there, which looks like it could be profitable. Be a little bit careful. Oh, don't you guys just hate it when they go in stasis? You know what I mean? You get these weird monsters that, that stop moving, but they also stop taking damage. They become, like, invulnerable. Oh, here we go. Let's see, what do we have? Tropical Island. Triple Teal is on. And it's just such an enjoyment not to have to wait for three minutes before the fight starts. Right, look at this. You only have two minutes on your clock. You better get your shit together. And the interesting thing is, while you build towers, and that's what other builds, you know, don't have, unless you have minions... Your totems are doing the work for you. You don't have to shoot. You can just put your totems down and let them do the work for you. So here we go. One minute, 40 seconds, and we still have yet to see a single monster here. So it's time to start uh, attacking then. On our own here. What the hell? Oh, okay. Swing. Start the map with a divine. I uh, hard to say no to that. we go, freeze him through here. <laughs> and here it is guys, like it's just visually so clear why I'm playing this build, right? It is one of the only builds that will never need explode proliferation or anything like that because your AOE and your range is just multiple screens either way. There's not a lot of builds that do this. There goes the boss. 40 seconds left. Look how fast these maps are going compared to yesterday. It's ridiculous the difference there. Oh no, it's a boss. Damage is ridiculous right now. It really is. And that's just 15 Headhunter stacks. It's not even... I, I have ran this with like 40 or 50 of them. At that point, your damage is, is, is just... Bye-bye, boss. Bye-bye, boss. This is still on the, on the low end. Look at that boss. Look at that. <laughs> Yo, so later. There you go. Tooltap. 15 million per totem. Oh, I'm making you nervous. Oh, no need to be nervous. Bye bye, boss. This is what I meant. Look at the hat on the sacks. 35. Look at this. Bye, boss. It just. That was it. It's just. 
Nothing does that. Certainly no minion build. I don't care how mad, mad you go on min-maxing. Alrighty then, guys. It is time to dive right into the basics of the build. Now, you see a version 0 here. It's called Barebone Shockwave. As you saw, there was no showcase of this build. Now, the reason I made a version 0 is... This one has no corruptions, no Watcher's Eye, no Bottled Faith, nothing that's any kind of fancy. And the reason we are going to look at this is because I want to show you guys the blueprint of what makes the build tick before we go into the actual playable up and up and up versions. Now that doesn't mean this isn't a playable version, it's just a version I haven't played. By the time I made this build I already had access to some of the corruptions. So we're just going to be looking at the Barasangers for this, so we can have a shorter time talking about the next versions. Let's get into the basics of this setup. So what are we looking at? You do see a few uniques here, and some of those uniques are completely mandatory. At least I think so for this build, at least for the way that we set it up. Now we're going to talk about some of these items that are going to keep coming back in this build however you're going to play this except if you really want to get crazy with the damage as a boss killer at that point you know you're going to do some different gloss but let's get into it. So which items do I believe will come back every time you play this build? Simply put, Heat Shiver, Rem Sorrow, Astral Projector, The Flash and Flames and The Militant Faith. Now before you go, Larry, you, <clears throat> so and so and so, why do you include the Flash and Flames? Guys, I was surprised, really surprised. Check the trade site right now. The Flash and Flames that you're looking at, both of them together. Two Divines, no more. That's why I'm including them in each and every version, even the bare bones, because these things are dirt cheap right now, right? So why do we have all these mandatories in there and what do they do? Well, let's talk first about what the skill itself is. We're looking at a Shockwave Totem. And what Shockwave Totem does is it summons a totem that shakes the earth around it. Knocks back and damage nearby enemies. Now, the knockback is kind of nice. We're not going to make use of it anymore at some point. But it's definitely a defensive layer. Now, what are we looking at? We are looking at a flat physical damage layer. Now, this is really important later on. This is also one of the reasons why we're going to include Headhunter later. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what we have is a AOE radius, a nice circle like you guys saw in the showcases, that deals flat physical damage, and a lot of flat physical. Now physical isn't so, you know, isn't by definition the most exotic damage type and the most fun damage type to have, so we're going to convert that. Right, we're going to convert that by using Rim Sorrow. Rim Sorrow says 100% of physical damage gets converted to cold damage. Now all of a sudden our Shockwave Totems deal cold damage. Now this opens us up to the next stage of the build, and the next mandatory of the build itself, which is Heat Shiver. Heat Shiver says, gain 1% of cold damage as extra fire damage per 1% chill effect on the enemy. Gain 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies. Because we are critting at a 100% rate, right? Enemies always get the frozen tag on them. Even pinnacle bosses. Now you will not freeze them solid so that they can't move. But the tag frozen is on them. Meaning you do get that damage multiplier from Heat Shiver making this a bad shit crazy damage increase for your build. It's absolutely crazy. The combination of a physical with Rim Sorrow and Heat Shiver are the basic foundations of the damage of the build. Now the next up, which we're gonna see all the time, is the Astral Projector. Now this is a funky little thing guys, that turns your totems into something that's ranged. You have a totem placement range, and Astral Projector makes the spells that are Nova spells that come from that totem, be ranged in and of themselves. Now it has a certain range, but you also have your totem placement range. So it's totem placement range plus astral projector range plus the AOE of the skill itself is the actual effective range of your skill. Simply put, it's huge. You've got multiple screens of clearing ranges. That is also why we didn't focus on defenses pretty much at all. Because for what we do, we simply won't need it. You never see a monster, right? It rarely happens. So astral projector, each ever, rim sorrow, mandatory. The forbidden flash and flames, super cheap makes it so that every time we deal a critical strike, and like we said we always do, we ignore enemy resistances. Huge damage increase for bosses, pinnacle bosses, but also the Blight Ravager bosses that we fight. And then, there is the Militant Faith. Now, the Militant Faith is really important because we do scale the power charges because of our ascendancy, right? We are using 
the Conviction of Power, 4 minimum endurance, 4 minimum power, easy damage. That means we get a 12% more damage multiplier from Inner Conviction right here. Very nice to have. Now, there are a few things you want to look at before you buy your Militant Faith. First and foremost, it needs to be the Templar, Templar Dominus version, because that is what makes you go Inner Conviction, right? And second off, when you look at a jewel like this and you think, oh, that's cheap, do not buy it. Import it in PUB and check if this note, this note, and this note does not get transformed into something else. If that happens, this is not good. You don't go for the jewel. It's that simple, guys. So yeah, those are the basics of the build. Now, you're also going to see a few things in the setup that stay about the same think clusters right we have physical clusters over here in this case it's a cluster with battle hardened force multiplier ironbreaker times two we've got some of the small clusters we've got 25 percent with introspection one without introspection but also with 25 percent and all of this is just so we can fit all the auras into the build that we do it is basically a somewhat of an aura stacker version of a totem build and like you guys saw in the showcase it absolutely slaps it's great Okay, so these are the bare essentials of the build. You're going to see this basically every bloody time I show you guys one of these five or six versions of the build. It's going to be the same for the bare essentials. The things that are going to change and will increase the budget for this build is increasing the levels of the skill itself. Because Shockwave Totem scales crazy with levels. Let me show you, right? Hit DPS, 5 million. Uh, sorry, 7.6 million. If we scroll down, that means a total with 5 totems up at 38 million. Look what happens if we put one level in Shockwave Totem. Bam, 42 million. Bam, 46 million. Bam, 52 million. And as you will see in these further versions, we focus on scaling the levels of the gem to about level 30, 31. How we do that? A plus 1 chevron at first, and then a plus 3 chevron expansive budget version right a plus one amulet becomes a plus two amulet etc 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 we scale more than anything else the levels of the gem that's how we scale the damage let's take a look at a different version of this build and show you guys you know how it is we scale and why we go up in budget and how we do that Let's go to the next version of the build. Now, we spent quite some time on our bare bones version, showing you guys the basics of the build. Be sure to check that out. Now, we're going to look at the next version. We're going to spend less and less time on each version. And all we do is kind of highlight what changes and why this build all of a sudden got more powerful and more expensive. So, the next version of the build is what we call the number one version of the build. And a few things have changed here. So, first and foremost, like we said, we are scaling the levels of the gem. So, this is a plus one, plus two, but... It's plus two curse. It is a horrible second corruption. This is also why this armor is still relatively cheap. But the increase in damage is there. We have bought a bottled faith for this setup. That's the difference. We have a watcher's eye for this setup. That's the difference. And those changes make the build somewhat more expensive. But still way, way cheaper than you think it is. It's about 25 divine at this point. And the damage has gone up from the, you know, 37, 38 million to 57 million. And that's pretty much it. There isn't any other difference. We are using the same clusters as you will see that we used before. Same clusters. The exact same militant faith. Nothing has changed there. The only difference is a little bit of scaling in levels. That watcher's eye. Right? And the plus one on this one. Which gives you a little bit extra on that aura. And that's it. Like I said, level scaling, very powerful. This build is more expensive, but it also does about 75% more damage. Now, we're going to take a look at the next version of the build, and let's see why that is the boss killer, what we call the boss. It's a different version, a different take on the build. So, let's take a look at it. Alrighty then, guys. The next version of the build is going to be the bosser of the shockwave totem now what makes this thing a bosser well you can immediately see that you're looking at 396 million dps which is a lot of damage right and we focused on just that it's a different version of the build uses some different items still interesting to look at i used it last league to carry the no hit runs and to do the no hit runs myself and also for the showcase that i showed you guys on this video let's take a look at what makes this thing different by the way the budget for this build is yes 
So why is that budget? Yes. Now what we did is we min-maxed the ever-living daylight out of this. Now you might remember this build being at the top of the leaderboards for pretty much the entire league last league. I had only one goal in mind, create a boss killer that just ends content, right? Especially the no-hit runs where we weren't allowed to get hit at all. This thing did that. Now, you will see, just like the previous showcases that I showed you guys, we only have a 19 AoE radius, but it doesn't matter. We're looking at single target. AoE is of no significance in this one. And looking at the weapon, just the weapon itself, you can see just it's beautiful, right? It's plus one, all plus one physical. It's the non-chaos to chaos, which is as extra chaos, which is huge because we do have that physical layer base, which is being counted. We've got that cold layer of the conversion that I'll show you guys in a sec. And we've got that fire layer, so that's a huge damage modifier. We've got that extra crit chance for spells we've got the spell damage cast speed tier one this thing is a monster of a wand so then we've got the plus two socketed aoe prism guardian we've got the heat shiver which has the increased effect of cold ailments which guess what right that is chill so just that is 29 percent of cold damage is extra fire damage right there we got the 90 percent cost and reservation multiplier corruption on it herald of ash increased reservation efficiency and it all just barely works right it's a typical stacker min maxed you're looking at the body armor obviously you're going to be looking at a plus one plus two highest possible levels we can get and all of a sudden no rim sorrows anymore i'll show you why we don't need them anymore because look at that the implicit 20 percent of physical damage is converted to cold damage there's your first conversion point. Now we've got Herald of Purity has 23% increased buff effect. That is pretty significant, right? That's an extra damage. But look at the bottom there. 49% increased damage would hit against chilled enemies. Enemies are always chilled. Absolutely amazing to scale your damage. Now some of these items, you know, it's just high energy shield. Nothing really too crazy there. But we have the 5% of physical as extra cold damage on there. The 120% increased critical strike chance if you haven't crit recently. Which we always do on totem builds because we never crit on totems do. And then we have this perfect, and I do mean perfect, amulet. Look at that thing. Again, plus 2 all. We've got 20% cast speed, 45 critical strike multiplier. It is just a monster. Area damage, area of effect, minimum frenzy, highest damage you can get. This is truly min-maxed, guys. Even the astral projector has a corruption on it. Global physical damage could be better, but still a very nice corruption to go for. And then we have a unset ring, gas speed fractured, so we could use some essences on it. So we gain the 10% of physical damage as extra fire damage. Very nice. The elemental damage with attack skills is useless. I could probably tweak that up a little higher, but that's how I ended it. Even the belt has the modifier increased damage with hits against chilled enemies. Anything and everything from this build screams more damage. No headhunter as you can see, no mage blood, just anything we can do for more damage. We've got four unique frost, the sin's rebirth works, right? It's the unholy might which gives you like a portion of your physical damage as extra chaos damage, again a damage multiplier or a, an, an extra modifier onto there. Uh, same thing for the series promise, physical as extra and elemental as extra we do both of those tags so it adds a lot of extra damage the watcher's eye is very nice it gives us the flat crit chance while affected by hatred and it gives us 40 percent of physical damage converted to cold damage and that's interesting because this is 40 the gloves are 20 which is 60 and on the tree we will see mastery which is 40 percent as well which puts us at 100% converted to cold damage. That's how we get our conversion. And pretty much aside from that, it all looks again very familiar and pretty much the same as it looked before. But obviously this is just, that's why I put budget. Yes, this is not attainable early on. This is what I spent all that no hit run currency on, the three quarters of a mirror early on that I got with the no hit run that you guys saw on YouTube. This thing was a fantasy came through, true, just to see how far we could scale it. And it did become quite the monster indeed, guys. I put this PUB in the description as well, because I want to show you guys, you know, if you really want to take it to the next level, this is where you'll end up 400 million easily attainable. And with the original send, we actually got up to 600 million close to 600 million 575 i didn't include that version in here because we don't have the original sin anymore sadly but yeah it could get even crazier not that you'd notice it this thing is a monster and it's gonna demolish content wherever you go or get demolished trying okay let's take a look at the next version of the build which is the high aoe farmer shockwave totem 3.21 high budget 100 million damage without a headhunter now, there is a bit of a difference between this version and all the other versions, and that is the high AOE 
element. Let's click it and let's see what's up. Now, if you look at the left side of the tree, you will see that it's got a AOE radius of 34. Might not, you know, say all that much, but if you look at all the previous versions, the highest thing we got was, I think, 21. And the boss killer was actually at, let me see here, 19. So a AOE radius of 34 is pretty insane. And you guys saw that in the showcase video. Now, the idea behind this build is, you are looking at a hundred million damage, right? Close to 101. Why? Well, we have six totems active. All of a sudden, we've swapped our shield to a shield like this. Now, why do we do this shield? Two reasons. First and foremost, we have the plus one to the maximum number of summon totems, right? We've got the socket gems have the 30% increased reservation efficiency, which we need because we are now losing, you know, that easy conversion that we have with our Prism Guardian. And we have the increased critical strike chance to spells. But there's something else on this thing that makes it so nice. Look at the chaos resistance. Because we have the tree on this, we're looking at 62% chaos res on this thing. Which is absolutely amazing for our survivability. This is no longer one of them tweaky weaky builds. We're trying to make a build here that's actually surviving some of these ground effects, degen, some chaos that's thrown at it. It is a farmable setup that we use for the Blight Ravaged maps. Now that's pretty much exclusively what we do because like you saw last leak and like I showed you guys in the guide, that is an insane currency generator. Now, we also see on this, regenerate 2% of life per second while on low life. We are always on low life, that means free regen. We see 5% reduced maximum life and don't care about it at all. Because we just reserve percentage life anyway, that doesn't matter. It is an amazing shield, really helps us put that extra totem there for some extra coverage. Now, what's interesting is we also swapped weapons here. Now, this weapon has some lightning damage to spells, which helps us with shock. We no longer use the skittlebots, right, because we use this now, this shield, we don't have the reservation efficiency room to use the Skittlebots. And really, unless you do boss killing or anything like that, Skittlebots does nothing for you. Because, you know, we are clearing two, three screens away, so Skittlebots <laughs> never even get into that radius. So, we're just adding an additional totem, and we are scaling AOE. And if you look at the weapon tree on this one, it is very nice. So, you have 24% increased area of effect. 10% reduced area of effect if you've killed recently. And just like the modifiers on the boots, we know that by now, right? How totems work. We never crit. We never hit. We never kill. That means this is a free 24% increased area of effect that is always active, guys. Very nice. Now, there's another thing that you can see. You see the 0.6% flat spell critical strike chance. That makes it easier than ever to cap our critical strike. This is also why our damage went up by quite a bit. I'll show you guys that in a sec. So, getting the flat critical strike chance, combined with the 25% critical strike chance for spells that's on the tree, combined with the 30% inherent global critical strike chance, with the 103% critical strike chance for spells that is explicitly on the weapon itself, you are looking at 158% increased critical strike chance for spells with that 0.6% flat. Now, the flat is obviously a multiplier that scales really nice with the percentages, and you can see that we have that on our Watcher's Eye as well. The Hatred Watcher's Eye, 1.8% flat with the crit for precision. Very nice. A little bit extra multiplier there. Rim Sorrow has that corruption on there as well, so it's a lot of flat points. And all of a sudden, because we have those flat points, we no longer need the increased critical strike support that we used on our last build. You know, the, the cheaper versions of the build. And because of that, now we can supplement or change that into something else. In this case, Awakened Increased Area of Effect. So instead of using Increased Critical Strikes, we don't need it, right? We're crit capped. We use Awakened AOE. And Awakened AOE gives us 57% Increased Area of Effect. Again, looking back at our weapon, our weapon gave us 24%. So that's 81% more area of effect than we had before. On top of that, we're making a few little changes to the tree. And now we are using the Arcane Expanse. Spell skills have 20% increased area of effect. That's an additional 20%. Puts us at 103%. 108%. 113%. Right there. 30%. 143%. And 
it's just, it scales crazy. You get so much AoE that you end up with a radius of uh, 34 flat. And you guys saw in the showcase, this is what I think makes this build so nice for Blight Ravage right now. You know that you're going to make about 40, 50 divines at minimum if you do a day of Blight Ravage. You, you can make up to 100 like you guys saw me do live last leak. And at that point, this build is already kind of bought and paid for. It's that simple. You can just do a day of Blight Ravage and there's your build. But it's the overlap that makes this so nice. You're looking at 100 million DPS and it's multiple screens away. It's everywhere. This is three times the damage you have on your poison build or your bleed build or your ignite build or whatever it is. They cap out at about 33 million to 37 million. It's three of those builds in one. And it's everywhere. It's multiple screens away. We don't need Explode. We don't need Proliferation. This, to me, is the build that I think feels comfortable in Blight Ravage. This is the point where it starts feeling comfortable. It's not max damage yet, but it's nice, right? This is where we are comfy wumpy. And even though we only have a effective hit pool of 16.5k, we pretty rarely die with this setup. And it generates a lot of currency. Within just a few days, you will have the currency for the next step, which is the next version of the build, Had Hunter enabled. Let's take a look. And that brings us to the next version of this build, guys, which is the High AoE Farmer Shockwave Totem 3.21 High Budget. But this one has the Headhunter. Now, in the showcase version, we call this the Batshit Crazy Mode. And it is, right? It's boom, map done. If you haven't seen that little clip, just watch it, especially at the end of the map. You just see all those stacks converge and your damage is in the billions it becomes crazy and it's important to think about why that is what makes headhunter so insane for this build specifically let's take a look guys now the build hasn't changed much at all as you can see you're looking at 103 and a half million damage it looks about the same the difference is the headhunter now I did make a few minor tweaks within the items themselves. Some of them got frenzy charges, some of them did it. We lost some damage left, we gained some damage right. Um, you can uh, see the difference between these two uh, path of buildings for yourself in depth. I'm not going to talk about too much about the details, but we, that, we did have to make some minor tweaks to make that headhunter work. But as you can see, it does, right? And what we are looking at now is headhunter stacks. Now, why headhunter? Why not, let's say, mage blood? Well, I told you guys in the beginning with the bare bones basics of the build is what we do is we scale physical damage. We scale physical damage, which then gets converted to cold damage, which we then get as extra fire damage. So there's multiple layers of damage. Now what a headhunter does is there is a couple of these modifiers that give you fizz as extra, which just means, you know, our build screams fizz damage. It's a high fizz base. The damage is just there. And I really recommend if you do blight ravage farming, you go for that headhunter because, <laughs> man, it just... It makes the build so much more fun. Now, I can just hear some of you guys say in the comment section like, Oh my god, he recommends a headhunter. Headhunter is way too expensive. I know, guys. It is a pain. It's really expensive. It's 120 divines. But with this build and your Blight Ravage strategies that I showed you guys last leak, you're going to farm this up in just a few days. Now, if you're one of those guys, you know, 9 to 5, gets at home, you don't have a lot of time, it might take you a week, but it's worth it. It really is, guys. Check the showcase again and you will see the difference between the headhunter version and the no headhunter version. And you're, you're probably gonna agree with me that the Headhunter is the way to go. So that's the next step into the build. A few minor tweaks into it, Headhunter added, a lot of extra damage, but pretty much not much changed at all. Let's take a look at the last version of the build, guys. Alrighty then, guys, the last version of this build is a little bit of an exotic one, and I haven't had the chance to test this thoroughly this league yet but i have all the confidence in the world that you're going to have a lot of fun with this for card farming think apothecaries nurses doctors all that kind of stuff i showed you guys a guide a few leagues ago 3.18 where i used a magic find version of the shockwave totem i was going to include that footage in the showcase or include that guide that is still on my youtube channel in the showcase as well but i think a lot of the items are outdated because of the recombinators that we don't have anymore so i made a completely new version of the magic find version of that leak in this leak and this is the pub for that setup now it's again a pretty high budget but what's interesting here is we still have that hunter intact we still have pretty much everything intact we've got the same aoe we lose one aoe radius 34 becomes 33 but this is where it becomes interesting 
now we don't use that amulet that we've been using for five different versions of the build. We use the Ayers of the Great Wolf. Oh yeah, you gotta go for the Ayers. So we got attributes on there and quantity of items found. Usually I would go for increased global defenses on that, but you're gonna run into some issues with your dexterity and with, you know, uh, strength probably as well. So getting the attributes on there is probably an easier way to go and it's a cheaper amulet. You're talking about the difference between a 35 divine amulet or a 70 divine amulet if you go for the global defenses. So it just fixes some problems and it's quote unquote a little cheaper. Now the next item that we change is we are going to change the rare ring to an uh, pariah, which gives us the 12% increased attack and gas speed, but more importantly because it's a white socket it gives us 15% item quant. So that is 35% item quant together with the amulet and then we change our boots to gold worm giving us 20% quant and all of a sudden you got 55% quant. Now as everybody knows, farming divination cops have nothing to do with rarity it's quant 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 so we only scale quant and there it is guys you have a easy converted version that works just about the same we are still capping our resistances as you can see we still have a little bit of chaos ras on it as well doesn't look all too bad we don't use any rarity flask or anything like that this is just adding quantity to the version with the changes that are exclusively the eyes of the great wolf the pariah version and the let me see where is it the boots, right? The gold worm. Those are the changes made. And again, you're looking at 75 million DPS on a 55% quant build before Headhunter kicks in. Just killing a few rare enemies is going to zoom you across the map at 55% quant. Now, again, this is not tested. I would have to tweak this up a little bit before I put it into, you know, default cathedrals. Upcoming in the next couple of days slash weeks is we're going to create a full team with Magic Find. This might be you know, get incorporated into it. I'm not quite sure about that. I'm not sure what the future for this specific version of the build is, but I did want to show you guys that yes, you know, you've been asking me for a few leaks, is it still possible to do magic find with this? It is. How successful, how effective? Um, I don't think I can give you an opinion on that before properly testing it myself, but I can give you the blueprint and that's this POB. Alrighty then guys, it's been a bit of a long video, but I promise you guys a pretty comprehensive guide and I think here it is. You can use the chapters in the description, you can see it in the video timeline, to check whichever information you feel you need to gain from this video. If you like this kind of content, let me know guys, let me know in the comments, but also leave a thumbs up and share this. And if you haven't hit that follow button yet, go ahead and hit that as well. Guys, I want to thank you all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Now keep in mind, we are live usually on Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays on Twitch as well. So if you want to see us live, that's where we'll be. Twitch.tv slash Lethal Easy, same name as the YouTube channel. Catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one, guys.